Hello, this is the second part of our login backend server using Node.js and MongoDB. Now following from the previous part, let's jump straight into the signup route. Now we start by taking the input from the body of our request. Right after that, we trim them of any white spaces. Once that is done, we check to see if any of the variables are empty. If any is empty, we return a JSON object. The JSON object will return will have a status and a message. We will use this format throughout this tutorial. If none of the variables are empty, we check for the format of the name using regular expression. If the name doesn't match our regular expression, we return a JSON object as well. Now we check for the format of our email using regular expression also. This regular expression is very long and will be posted in the description of the video. Once the email passes our test, we check for the validity of our date. Should our date pass, we check for the length of our password. Once there is no issue with our input variables, we start the sign up process. To start, we check if a user with a provided email exists already, and we do so using the model we created with Mongoose.
to have access, we import this model into our user.js API file. Once that is done, we search for the user using the find function of the model. For functions that return promises, we will attach the catch block to handle any error that occurs. Should the user exist already, we return a message saying that a user with the email already exists. If the user doesn't exist, we store the user in the database. But before that, we need to hash the password that was received and we will do so using Brecrypt library. We use Bcrypt to hash the plain password. Bcrypt return a promise with the hashed password which we can now use. Also we handle the catch block for any errors that can occur. Now once that is done, we will create a new user with the data we have, including the hashed password. Remember this new user is created with the model we created using Mongoose. Once that is done, we can save the user. Should the user be saved successfully, we can return a success message.
In addition to the message, we add the data that we just stored to be sent back to the client. Now once that is done, we can test the sign up using Postman. So we change the request type to post and enter the URL we see now. Our link ends in forward slash user forward slash sign up. This is because our app checks for forward slash user and passes it to the router. In the router, we check for forward slash sign up. Now let's pass some data with a request. Before sending our request, we make a quick check at our MongoDB database to confirm that it is still empty. Now we send our request and it's successful. Now we go back to the MongoDB and refresh. Now we see that our data has been saved. So now let's move on to the login route. To start with the login session, we copy the initial part of our sign up section. Since we need only email and password, we delete the other unwanted parts. Once that is done, we check for any empty variables. Just as a sign up, should the variable be empty, we return a message to the client. If none of the variables is empty, we start with the login process. Now using the model, we check if a user with the email provided exists in our database. Once a user with the email exists, we take the password and compare it with the hashed password in the database. We use bcrypt for this comparison as well. If the comparison is true, we return a success message to the client. In addition to that, we add the data from the database. Otherwise, we return a field message. Let's handle some other errors that might occur using the catch block. Once we are done, we take a quick glimpse at our terminal to ensure that there are no errors. Once we have no errors, we can go to Postman and copy our sign up link. Once that is done, we can open another tab and paste the link we copied. We 
change the last part of the link to sign in and also the request type to post. Now we make the sign in request using a dummy data. And we have an unexpected error. Taking a look at the code, we forgot to check for the length of the received data. Once that is done, everything should work fine. Checking again, we get invalid credentials, which is what we expected. Now let's take a look at the sign up data and make the sign in request using the data we used in the sign up. Now, as we can see, the sign in is working successfully. And that's all for this episode. In future episodes, we'll be connecting this backend server to mobile apps and also web applications. If you learned something from this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, please leave a comment about the video and also other suggestions that will make this channel better.